Hello, my name is Scott Cunningham, Product Manager for Controls and Drives at KAB America. And my presentation today is going to demonstrate how straightforward it is to create coordinated motion using EtherCAT and the KAB product line. Uh, one of the advantages of EtherCAT is from the ground up, it was designed to support synchronous communication, which is a critical requirement of coordinated motion. Uh, the application I will simulate is a seal bar uh, used often in the packaging market. Uh, and the seal bar will be coordinated and synchronized to an in-feed conveyor. So if we switch over and take a look now at our programming environment, the Comivis Studio uh, programming environment, this is our start page and we're going to start with simply a new project, a new standard PLC project, and we'll give it generic name, seal bar. Uh, the control platform we're going to demonstrate is our C6 Smart Control, which is a DIN mount product. Uh, and we're going to use the pro level performance, which is required for soft motion or coordinated motion. The main PLC PRG program, I'm going to choose function block diagram, uh, as this will be a fairly easy and straightforward way of showing the function blocks that we use for this application. Uh, the software tool creates a shell program on the left and we need to add a few items to it. For example, we will need to add the EtherCAT master itself. And when I do that, it already knows that we are using the C6 Smart product, which happens to have a side EtherCAT port for remote I.O. So that coupler is added automatically. And I'm going to add our KB servo drive which will be used to run the seal bar and for the in-feed conveyor for this demonstration I'm going to use a virtual drive for the in-feed conveyor otherwise known as a fake drive. Um, all right so we have the hardware added uh, however uh, I don't particularly like the names so for my sanity here we will change the virtual drive to an in-feed conveyor and when we adjust uh, the names our refactoring tool automatically activates which allows us to avoid having to go find and replace uh, all of the renames so the servo drive the pro driver will replace it as seal bar and for the inverter itself or the servo drive i'm going to call it vfd 103 because i have a schematic that tells me that that device happens to be vfd 103. Uh, looking at the tree here, the EtherCAT master device is added, and there we have the distributed clock settings, which is our synchronous control. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, four milliseconds, but you can go down to uh, one millisecond or sub one millisecond, depending on the application. And for the TAS, the PLC PRG needs to be called at the same time with the EtherCAT task. And this is a requirement of coordinated motion, so I'll move that in there. As far as control function blocks, there are a number of soft motion function blocks that have been predefined and created uh, for use by customers by the PLC Open Group. One of the complaints of these function blocks is they're very com compartmentalized. So for example, if you want to do a velocity profile, there's a function block for uh, velocity move, but to actually stop the move, you need a stop function block. If you're going to use an absolute move, uh, then you need to call an absolute move function block, and so on and so forth. So KEB has created our own uh, utility library that is standardly available with our product line called KEB SMC Utility. And that is our soft motion utility. And there we merge together a number of function blocks into one function block. So for example, we have a single access control that is one function block to run everything. And from there, you can choose velocity mode or jog mode, absolute positioning, relative positioning, homing, and set position. 
Uh, additionally, we have a cam access control function block, and this is actually what we will use for the seal bar. And this function block gives us everything in one call. Let's go ahead and add the function block for the virtual drive or the in-feed conveyor, which I will use a single access control. And our auto declaration activates. We'll go ahead and add the cam access function block for the seal bar. And let that auto declare. Of course, for the cam access control, we actually need a cam profile. So let's add a cam to this application. And the cam designer uh, is a set of graphs. The top one, the horizontal axis, is the master position. And 0 to 360, for example, would be one revolution or one cycle of the machine. And the vertical axis would be the slave device, or in this case, the seal bar. If we look at the seal bar in soft motion, uh, this application will have a range of 0 to 300 millimeters for travel. And under the scaling, we will have uh, 10,000 in hex, which is 65,536 increment counts per motor turn. This will be a direct drive, so we won't have any gear between the motor turns and the output. And one output revolution would correspond to 50 millimeters uh, on this application. The in-feed, or the master speed control, We'll set this as rotary or modulo, and it will be based on 360 degrees. So if we look at the cam profile, as the infeed makes one revolution, the seal bar should go from zero millimeters out to 300 and back. So we start with the last edit point, and we tell it we want to come back to zero millimeters. And we need to be done with our sealing at three quarters of the index. And max travel in that case will be at the 280 millimeters. Our first point, which is minimum point of where we should be synchronized, we will set to 45 degrees or the first eighth of the uh, cycle. And it should be synchronized by the 20 millimeter mark. Everywhere in between these two marks needs to be a straight line, which gives us our angular synchronization between the seal bar and the in-feed conveyor. Now that we have all of our parts, we can go in and pre-fill some items for this demonstration. The in-feed conveyor will be in velocity mode. We will have it always be positive rotation. We'll set some XL, D cell jerk levels and it will, function block will control the infeed axis. For the seal bar, I'll generally enable it. I want the camming profile and we will have some XL, D cell and jerk values uh, in case we were using velocity or homing. The cam table will be the cam axis, master is the infeed, and the axis under control is the seal bar. That is our basic application. Now we have to tell our software what device we're going to talk to. So we will scan for our devices here. There it is, C6 Smart. We'll connect to it and actually program the project. And then we'll hit play, and we'll get a couple items showing up here. Split the screen. All right. This is our, make this a little bit easier to see. These are the software representations of the physical axes. And you can see 
The seal bar is at the home position. The infeed conveyor, I will start it and give it uh, 60 degrees per second command. And we'll see here now we have achieved a synchronization between the infeed conveyor and the seal bar. So as the infeed conveyor goes from zero degrees to 360, our seal bar synchronizes, matches, reaches a point and returns back home. So if I go ahead and speed up the system on the fly, you can see here that we are sliding back and forth. And if we go to 360 degrees per second or one cycle per second, we are now indexing or sealing between our products every second. This concludes my demonstration of how straightforward it is to use EtherCAT to achieve synchronous coordinated motion with the KB product line. Thank you.